everyone. So good to see you this evening. That was um, Gesher by Yosef Goldman. And the lyrics in English are, all the world is a very narrow bridge. And the most important thing is to not be overwhelmed by fear. Welcome to our Vesper services. I invite you to make the transition from getting here to being here. Let us breathe deeply together. It is good to share this time together and thank you Rebecca Keller Scholl for doing our tech Vesper our Vesper tech tonight. 
And I'm going to be honest that, oh, first, everyone is muted so we can create our sacred space. And I'm going to also be honest and say that there are likely to be technolo technological issues. It is just the way of the world. And we will be just rolling with whatever happens. It's part of our Vesper experience. I need to let you know that we are recording this. So if you don't want to be um, in our recording, please do turn off your camera. Vespers is the traditional monastic evening prayers shared at sunset. It is a time for us to change the pace of our day and settle into the evening and our time for relaxing. It's a time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset to help us into that mindset and in honor of the Rosh Hashanah holiday celebrated by our Jewish siblings near and far, we will be listening to something called a new year and it said it was a gift from the 92nd Street Y. This be a year of love and kindness. May strangers come to be friends. May truth and compassion always guide us. Amen. May this be a year of hope and healing for all. This evening, we'll begin by lighting our chalice, which is the symbol of our faith, with words that come from Lois Van Leer for Rosh Hashanah and blessings of a new year. We light this chalice on the brink of a new year, letting go of what has been open and hopeful for what may come, renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew, 
May we move forward with intention. And now let us light candles to represent the joys and sorrows present in the silence among us today. Please bring into your hearts any sorrows and joys you're carrying with you this week as we hold this space for our community and the world. We're going to start with the candle for our joys, for the beautiful fall foliage, and for coming back together after our summer apart and for blessings in this new year. We light a candle. And a candle for our concerns, for all of those who were impacted by Hurricane Helene's colossal strength, for the loss of life, of homes, and of communities, we light a candle. And finally, we light a candle for our world, for all of the people in Gaza, as Israel's war and genocide continue. We light a candle of peace for a ceasefire and an end to all the killing. May these candles bring light and hope to us all. And let us take this quiet musical interlude as a time to reflect on the joys and sorrows that we are carrying with us in our hearts today. Our reading this evening um, come, is called Building a Common Life. It's from the series that the UUA puts out called Braver Wiser, and it's by, by Ilea Kemmler. My community is small town life at its best. Drivers stop to let you in because if you cut someone off, you'll see them later at the post office. And at the dump, we have a swap shop so that you can get rid of your own trash as you come home with someone else's. 
We use town meetings as our form of governance, which means sitting in the middle school auditorium and voting on important things like whether we can afford a new senior center by raising our hands. There are no secret ballots, relatively few secrets at all. And for almost 400 years, people have managed to live together here despite fierce disagreements. But these are not the best of times. Recently, our elected town leaders proposed putting up stones at the town entrances engraved with the words that all are welcome. And it quickly turned horrible. The welcome stones uncovered many ugly things, mistrust, fear, racism, homophobia, words like illegals and criminal elements were spoken. There were warnings about busloads of pedophiles and rapists who would arrive once the stones went up. And the church I serve was accused of promoting a pro-gay, pro-immigrant agenda, which I was proud to confirm. And when it came time to take the vote, after weeks of bitter argument and contempt on all sides, I had to force myself to keep my eyes open. I didn't want to see who voted no, but I knew I needed to look, to see my neighbors' faces in a moment which felt like a referendum on my community's heart. The vote to keep the welcome stones passed by a solid margin for which I am grateful, but it was a painful, painful time. Still, I choose to believe in community. I choose to believe in the difficult, slow work of building a common life. I believe in the strength and goodness of late neighbors living side by side, even when we do not agree on things that matter deeply. The welcome stones have been put into place now. The best hopes of those of us who wanted them have not come to pass, and neither have the worst fears of those who did not. Time will inevitably soften their edges, and I pray we will become more able to live into the welcome they proclaim. And in the meantime, we are still here. Our lives interwoven in this place that we call home. Here ends our reading. First Parish, as many of you already know, um, has a practice of themed ministry. And each month we have a different theme that guides our sermons, small group ministry, and some of our religious exploration classes. And tonight's Vesper service is centered on this month's theme of democracy. Now, Reverend Frederick, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, um, who was our former president of the Unitarian Universalist Association, said of democracy that democracy for Unitarian Universalists is a matter of theology. It's part of our history, our heritage, and it speaks to our belief in the inherent worth and dignity of all people, because all people have an equal voice. And this evening, we're going to do some visioning together because we're thick into the middle of a presidential election cycle. And we're going to imagine maybe that we're living in Alea Kemmler's small town and we're laying out that welcome mat and we are setting a table to welcome all. So I invite you to settle into your seats, get comfortable, and let's take a deep breath in together and let it out. In small towns, families and friends, we make decisions together communally, both big and small and in lots and lots of places. And I want us to maybe start by imagining that that town is a home and at home we are setting a table and at that table i'm going to ask you to invite all of your beloved people your siblings your parents 
your aunts and your uncles, your relatives, they're all crowded around that table. Tables are a place where we make lots and lots of big decisions. I want you to look around at that table and see all those faces. And know that this table, as in many houses, is where big decisions are made. Are these people sitting around the table, are they all like you? They're the same gender identity. Do they have the same cultural background? Now, as you picture yourself sitting there with all of your beloveds, what kind of decisions are being made? Is it as simple and complicated as what we're all having together for dinner? Or maybe who's going to do the chores? Or where's the next family vacation? Listen in on this conversation. Does everyone get a voice at your table? Are the conversations polite, lively, passionate? And now when you feel grounded in this time around the family table, I'd like you to imagine that a knock comes at the door and a stranger comes in and joins you. You look around and your table is very full. It's so crowded. Do you make room? Do you pull up a chair for them? and make them welcome? Does this stranger get a voice in the conversations and the decisions? What voice does this voice, does this person add? And now I'd like you to spend a little bit of time imagining what is it meant to bring a stranger into your home and make them a part of your family table? How's your conversation changing? Is your circle expanding to include this stranger among your new beloveds? And now we're going to transition. I'd like you to imagine that our table has grown infinitely larger and it's going to include the whole country now. And I'd like you to envision what it would mean for everyone to have an equal voice at this large table. How would our world change if we all sat at the table together and had the same voice? Imagine 
you're sitting down with everyone to a meal, what kind of blessing would you offer if you were saying grace at this table? I invite you to offer it now. In your heart, speak the wishes and blessings. Center all of your love for this infinitely large and crowded table. And as we slowly come back to the here and the now, I'd like you to remember this blessing that you envisioned. I want you to hold it tight to your heart and remember it in the coming weeks as we travel these finally, final weeks of the presidential campaign. Think about what you can do to make this blessing come to fruition. Hold on to your blessing and share it far and wide. I invite you to breathe in with me and out. And as you slowly come back to this space, we'll listen to Crowded Table by the High Women. So, we're running a little over. I'm going to do our benediction. And if anybody feels like they want to stay, they can. But I apologize that I didn't time this entirely well. But our benediction, it's a poem that um, that's called Perhaps the World Ends Here. And it's by Poet Laureate Muskogee Creek Nation member Joe Harjo. The world begins at a kitchen table. No matter what, we must eat to live. The gifts of earth are brought and prepared set on the table. So it has been since creation, and it will go on. We chase chickens or dogs away from it, babies teeth on its corners. They scrape their knees under it. It's here that children are given instructions on what it means to be human. We make men at it. We make women. At this table, we gossip, recall enemies and ghosts of lovers. Our dreams drink coffee with us as they put their arms around our children. They laugh with us at our poor falling down selves as we, and we put ourselves back together once again at the table. This table has been a house in the rain and an umbrella in the sun. Wars have be begun and ended at this table. It is a place to hide in the shadow of terror, a place to celebrate the terrible victory. We have given birth at this table and have prepared for our parents' burial at this table. At this table, we sing with joy, with sorrow. We pray of suffering and remorse and we give thanks. Perhaps the world will end at the kitchen table while we are laughing and crying, eating of the last sweet bite. May we build an infinitely large table to truly welcome all. May love be the centerpiece at this table. May we create peace at this table. May we end hunger. May everyone have a voice who comes to this table. May it be so. Thanks for all. Thanks to all of you for being here. We conclude our Vesper service with the song Get Together by the Young Bloods. It's a bit of a throwback, but I love this song. And please, I invite you to type your, type your good nights and goodbyes into the chat and stay for the closing song if you've got time despite our late ending, and we'll wave and log off in silence when the song is finished. 
Have a peaceful, peaceful night. Love is but a song we sing Fears the way we die You can make the mountains ring Or make the angels cry Though the bird is on the wing And you may not know Returns for us at last We are but a moment of sunlight Fading in the grass Come on people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Yeah.